welcome to the channel. This is gonna be a different style video because honestly, I'm not feeling very well and I just want it to be chill. So let me start by saying I'm not really a Doctor Who fan in terms of someone who is hardcore, in terms of someone who watched the initial old Doctor Who versions from like the 1920s. However, it was introduced to me some years back and I started with Christopher Eccleston and I fell in love with it. Rob. <laughs> I guess I'm what you'd call a new Who fan, but I don't think I'd consider myself a fan. I don't think I love it enough at this moment to call myself that. During David Tennant's and Matt Smith's era, however, is when I felt that way. David Tennant especially made me fall in love with Doctor Who, and in my mind, he was my Doctor Who. Right along the time Peter Capaldi was on his way out, Doctor Who still felt like Doctor Who, but like, its quality was just lacking. Don't get me wrong, it was still fun, but it didn't feel like it packed a big punch as it did in the older Doctor Whos. And now we know things are subject to change, and the wonderful thing about Doctor Who is how versatile it is, especially given that Doctor, as we know him, is always regenerating, which allows the franchise to go on forever because you can always get new actors to replace the old ones. Unfortunately for me, this meant that David Tennant was going to be leaving, and when we got Matt Smith, oh my god. I have to admit, as I have in previous videos that I've done about Doctor Who, I absolutely freaking hated him. Hated him with a capital H. <laughs> I hated him, I hated his face, he looked like Frankenstein's monster, and it took me a few episodes for me to realize that he was growing on me. His personality grew on me first. Let me tell you, I seriously did not want to accept this man as a new doctor, and he didn't feel like the doctor until he got serious and pretty scary, and then I was like, ooh, Ooh, that's the doctor all right pretty intimidating kind of like him now okay i see you you earned my sub peter capaldi's doctor was very cynical and interesting but super old even though when he got really mad it was very entertaining because he was like super intimidating and i love that about him total rick sanchez vibes not just because he maybe that yeah yeah the old has a lot to do with it he looks like rick sanchez then we got jody who just felt odd. People started noticing that Doctor Who was slowly succumbing to the same social pressures of trying to show off and look cool to everyone when they never needed to because they were already doing it. One of the things I loved about Doctor Who was because it always felt like a progressive show that touched on ethical and social issues while allowing the characters to explore their points of view. Even though it could come off a bit biased at times, regardless of whether or not it was biased, it made for a good show and the stories were usually crafted very well. Surely, not every episode is great, but overall the quality just felt better, and that's ironic given that the quality of Doctor Who as a show has always been lower tier in terms of like 80s Muppet monster costumes and makeup. Jodie Whittaker's era was impressive in terms of semantics and the presentation. It felt like an evolution of Doctor Who, the franchise, due to how polished and pristine it looked. However, even though I'm sure Jodie Whittaker is a great actress, for me personally, she was definitely miscast for Doctor Who. What didn't help was the marketing for her era being all about her being a woman and fans were divided because a lot of people realized that the only reason that they were pushing this was to try and be inclusive even though that was never necessary in the franchise like this since Doctor Who brought in so many fans both male and female. It's okay to have a franchise that has a male character exclusively or a female character exclusively. However, even as a female, I've noticed that in male spaces and franchises, they're expected to just make way for female characters while the female spaces all but stone out males if they try to do the same. Regardless, I decided to give it a chance. Some of the episodes were decent, but Jodie Whittaker was very annoying. I'm sorry. And she came off as though she was cosplaying as David Tennant. It just didn't feel real to me. Like I said, the woman from Dracula, Agatha, I think her name is, the woman who played Missy, they would have made excellent Doctor Whos. We are under attack from the forces of darkness. Why would the forces of darkness wish to attack a convent? Perhaps they are sensitive to criticism. As I was saying, the woman who played Missy and Agatha Van Helsing in the Dracula series would have made excellent Doctor Whos. They had the charisma and the charm and the chops for this kind of role. So it had nothing to do with Jodie being a woman, but really everything to really do about playing the role of a doctor who just happens to be regenerated as a woman and not playing the role of a doctor because she is a woman. You see, there's a difference. And because of these issues, the studio is feeling as though they need to bend over backward to say, see you guys, we're not racist or sexist. See, look. Productions come out feeling like gross overcorrections that serve no one. And while they do claim to be giving women and minorities representation, 
it feels a lot of the time like they're giving them the wrong kind of representation and not doing us any favors. I fell off of Doctor Who with Jodie Whittaker and I did give her a chance. This is why I also preface that I hated Matt Smith at first, but he did eventually win me over. Unfortunately, Jodie Whittaker did not win me over. I've seen her in something else and she's excellent, but she just doesn't feel as though her heart was fully in this or as though she were cut out for it. Then I hear about the new Doctor that's supposed to be taking over from Jodie Whittaker. And honestly, I'm excited. I mean, I don't know if I should be because, you know, with studio track records nowadays, but I really want to give this person a chance. And I feel like anything at this point would be better than Jodie. And he's a cute, he's cute too. Look at him. Beautiful. Let's hope he can act, which I have faith that he can because I've seen little clips and I'm like, all right, let's, let's see. Let's see. But surprise, surprise, they decide to do something for the fans and bring back David Tennant, everyone's favorite doctor, the 10th doctor. There's no doubt he's very popular with a lot of people, particularly the female Doctor Who fans for obvious reasons. He's charming, he's handsome, and he's fun. And of course, girls are gonna go head over heels for him. It's what put me on to David Tennant at first and after seeing his performance as the Doctor, it made me search out all the other movies he's been in and man, were there some... Yeah. <laughs> One of them was horrible, but he played a villain and it was kind of, um... And anyway, <laughs> he's uh, also good in uh, Good Omens, and I absolutely love that show to pieces. Oh my gosh, Good Omens is freaking amazing, especially the second season. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. David Tennant kills it as David Tennant. You heard what I said, because he's basically playing himself. Damn. Anyway, <clears throat> where, where was I? What was I saying? Lost my train of thought. Hold on. Anyway, like I was saying, yeah, good omens. Oh, good omens is good. Great concept, but that's not the show we're talking about. But go check it out after this. Um. So anyway, David Tennant comes back as Doctor Who in the Star Beast special. 2023. And I'm going to be very honest about this review. Donna is one of my favorite companions. As a matter of fact, I think she is my favorite. She reminds me of Sarah from The Lamb Before Time. And that character is very near and dear to my heart because she's also one of my imaginary friends. Yes, I know I'm crazy. Anyway, but Donna is like the embodiment and the adult version of her. So when I heard she was coming back and they were going to continue the story for that whole arc, I was actually kind of intrigued. I wasn't as excited as I felt I was going to be though, and I think it's because I've just been jaded. I've already fallen out of love with Doctor Who so long ago that the prospect of him coming back only three or four episodes, like, that just felt like fan service. But it was a welcome one, I guess. I mean, the first thing I noticed is the opening. If Donna ever remembers me, she will die. And now I've got a nice life. So they have a tired looking David Tennant floating in space on some invisible platform telling everyone what's happening. And for me, honestly, it just breaks the immersion. I don't know why they chose to go this route with the recap. They could have just recapped it like everyone else or had his voice over without us seeing him awkwardly standing there in his oversized pants. Then we have Donna doing the same. And I don't know, it's just very awkward. And I try to look past this and get myself back into the immersion, which was very hard and I don't know why. I don't know, it just comes down to preference but Jesus Christ, I don't know why they chose that route. Anyway, we're reminded that if Donna ever remembers the Doctor and her adventures again, she'll immediately die. The Doctor's wondering why he has this face again. Like, what gives? Then we get a whimsical updated intro, which is actually really pretty, and I absolutely enjoy the intro. The intro is something that I never really paid attention to. I mean, not that much. It's not something that really excited me, except for when there were regenerations and a new Doctor errors because they always change it slightly. You're trying to look out what the difference is. But this is a really big overhaul from what we had before, and that was welcome. Another reason for the excitement is that Russell T. Davis was coming back to write this, and so people had thought that this was going to be amazing since he was coming back alongside David Tennant and Donna. The TARDIS shows up at the beginning of the episode, and throughout this episode, David, sorry, the Doctor, finds himself in Donna's path once more, and no matter what he does to try and avoid her, it's clear that his destiny is to be near her, which is putting her at risk. Then we hear Donna calling out, Rose, Rose. I'm confused because I'm thinking it's the other Rose until we realize that it's her kid. I guess it's been 15 years or so since she's seen the doctor. Sorry, I have to stop saying it. Everyone says the doctor. So it's like, that's the way it's supposed to be pronounced anyway. But it's been 15 years since they all saw him, since she's seen him. So I guess Rose is supposed to be 15 years old, even though she looks like she's pushing 27. But I guess that's normal for, well, it's normal for American cinema, because they try to get people who look younger, but <laughs> you can't play actual kids for certain things. So I'm okay with them using adults, but it does come off looking awkward sometimes. And the first 
first thing I thought, honestly, the first thought that crossed my mind when I saw Rose is, wow, she's really pretty. Like, usually that's not a thing with companions. <laughs> Their Amy was okay, but the brown hair girl, the lost girl who never was, or the child of, the I forgot what her name is, but the brown hair one was like the prettiest one. And then we had the black girl, which was like banging. And then we have her and I'm like, okay. I already knew that the actor was trans before going in. So it's not like a surprise. I'm like, whatever. It's about the adventure. And the thing is, I understand that there is this big conversation around trans people. And the reason people seem to be on edge about this is because there are members of the trans community and even outside of it that make it seem like you can't say anything or have any conversations about trans people and that you're supposed to treat them differently, even though I'm sure trans people don't want to be treated differently. So it would have been awesome if they had her in this and just made her the new companion because I thought that's where they were going with it. And that Rose was going to accompany the doctor until he was ready to regenerate and then she would continue accompanying him. And when they introduced Rose, I actually liked her. The introduction of her, I really liked her. She was very sweet. She was very put together and graceful. And she feels like a character of Doctor Who. I know people are going to kill me, but I actually like her a bit better than the original Rose in terms of her personality and how she was presented. Sorry, but the first Rose always rubbed me the wrong way because she treated her boyfriend like he didn't matter. So she just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth right away. And they always made her boyfriend a laughing stock. Like he was literally a gesture. Like... And I was like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> like he was literally an absolute fool. And it was very annoying. I get it. The doctor is supposed to be handsome. He's supposed to be the handsome, cool space guy that you would leave your boyfriend for. And it's not just Rose who does this, but for whatever reason, her and her teeth just put me way off. So anyway, a spaceship crashes and Doctor Who is trying to figure out what's going on while also trying to stay away from Donna. He ends up talking to her husband and all of this is off to a good start. I will say though it feels like David Tennant is a little rusty with his performance that could probably just be me he just felt a little bit uncomfortable and maybe it's because it's been a while since he's been the doctor even though he's literally playing Doctor Who in Good Omens but you know I could tell anyway it was still nice to see him even though he feels very mellow and out of place I did enjoy the uses of the sonic screwdriver and that was just so amazing like watching him use it to draw up a schematic of the ship that crashed and him interacting with it and like this is how we were always intended to see the sonic screwdriver being used but I guess they just didn't have the money at the time and the technology to depict that with the old Doctor Who's so it's really nice seeing this happen if that's something they did before and I just missed it forgive me but this is my first time seeing that and I was actually really pleasantly surprised so right around eight minutes and 34 seconds we find out that Rose's former name was Jason and her classmates that are going by her are making her feel uncomfortable and making fun of her just disrespecting her and being assholes Jason you're on. She should have just gone over there and kissed them because they're acting like they want her, so. But when I saw how sad and uncomfortable she looked, it made me feel sad. And I honestly thought, oh, they're gonna tackle this in a very mature and sweet way. Doctor Who is no stranger to social issues and points of view from different cultures and people, but I figured they were gonna do what they always do and they weren't going to single this person out just based on the fact that she's trans, but that she's going to be a very integral character and rise above that very superficial label. I figured they were going to make her more than just a trans woman. I like the support that her family gives her and Donna trying to encourage her. We also find that Donna, for some stupid reason, gave away all her lottery money, which made me just want to smack her because it makes no freaking sense. And I don't even think she realized it made sense. Like, she knows it didn't make sense, especially when you consider how they're struggling, especially when you consider half these charities. You have to be very careful because the ones you give your money to, they scrape off like 90% of it and only give 10 where it's intended to go. But don't let the big house fool you. Trust me, as someone who grew up in a big house, not all that glitters is gold. There are stories about all of our neighbors who people would think are rich going through the most horrendous things and being in such financial issues that you'd be wondering whether or not you're in an episode of Ozark. But throughout the episode, Donna's mom, the old lady, trying to keep her mind off of that. Donna keeps feeling as though something is missing, like she lost something. So it's really interesting. We get the setup of what this episode is supposed to be about and everything starts off great. And then I swear to God, it just descends into utter madness and messiness. So they're having a conversation and the grandmother is asking if Rose is okay. And she has a very interesting back and forth with Donna. The grandmother mentions that she notices that as her grandma, she's complimenting Rose a lot more. She wonders if that's the right thing to do because when Rose used to be Jason, she didn't do that. So I can understand how it would feel very awkward and possibly even awkward 
awkward to Rose if she has that kind of personality. People seem to be bending over backward now to compliment her and treat her extra. I don't know about anybody else, but that would make me feel self-conscious. <laughs> and it would feel like people are just doing that to make me feel better. And it would make me feel way more self-aware, like in an uncomfortable way. It's like, okay, I'm different now, but I don't want you reminding me at every waking moment that I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just me. It's like those people who have their faces burned off and they look like something from out of a horror movie and people are like, no, you're fine. You look amazing like a Disney princess. When in truth, they look like something from out of Silent Hill. And I can understand if they're little children, but as a young adult or an adult, I think it's important for people to also be realistic. Like you can be encouraging, but I think it's also important that adults learn how to have friends that will tell them the truth. It doesn't mean you have to go out of the way and be like, yo, you fugly as shit. Like you shouldn't say that, but also don't gas them up to the point where they're set up for failure. Now in truth, Rose does look gorgeous. That is the truth. I'm talking about friends or so-called friends who say nothing but positive things about you because they want you to feel better and they want you to, to be supportive, but then they end up being the same kind of friends that won't tell you the truth when you need to to hear the truth and some of them even talking bad about you behind your back while they're smiling in your face and that's very dangerous because what ends up happening is that you go out into the real world where people tell you otherwise and now you feel like everyone that you loved lied to you and you can't trust anyone so the grandmother trips up and says this i'm gonna say she looks gorgeous is that right when is it sexist when is it to him when it and the first thing that put me off was the death stare that Donna gave to her mom. To understand, like as a grandmother, you spent most of this person's life recognizing them with one name and with a different gender. She immediately apologizes because she's not used to it. One of my uncles, when he converted to Islam, changed his name. Honestly, initially because he was so cut off from the rest of the family, he always saw himself as superior to all his other siblings. His siblings were like, I'm not calling him that because we grew up knowing him as this name. So they would call him his birth name and he would always correct them and they wouldn't take him seriously. Seriously. And I would call him by his Islam name or his new Egyptian name. And as a kid, I remember my mom correcting me and telling me to call him by his birth name because I guess in her mind, she didn't want to feed into his religion or whatever. I don't know. But he actually legally changed his name. So just... To avoid all the family drama, I would refer to him just as uncle. And I'm gonna be honest, I would always slip up even when I would call him his new legal name. I sometimes would end up calling him his old name at first because from a baby, that's how I knew it. That's how I knew him and I slipped up. One day my grandmother, his mom, corrected me and she sat me down and said, look, look, he legally changed his name to this. So try and call him by his legal name. Like don't go out of your way to be disrespectful, just be disrespectful. Cause I think she knew that's what her other kids were doing. So over time, especially after my grandmother passed away, that uncle and his siblings, my mom and her other brother, got closer and before that point they were calling him by his new Muslim name even they slipped up by that point he would still correct them but he wouldn't bite their heads off as a matter of fact he wouldn't even correct them all the time there were several times where I would hear them make a mistake and he wouldn't correct them. And if they made the mistake again, then he'd be like, it's this, you know, but whenever he did it, he was very patient and he understood they were trying. If he was annoyed, it didn't come out in his voice. And I thought that was very class. Now I think this is the hardest scenario because it's family. And when families are used to the habits of calling you this certain thing, it's the hardest habit to break. It's like, if you're used to calling your little puppy, hey puppy, and now the puppy identifies as a kitten, you know, it's gonna be hard to change your nickname. Like, hi pup because you're used to it from the puppy was eight six weeks I've been calling them that nickname and now you have to get into your mind no no she wants to be called kitty I know I'm using my babies as an example because I don't have kids so those are my kids so if I'm introduced to someone and they introduce me as a this person this name I'll respect them as they have introduced me as whatever they want to be called if it's a random stranger and I have no idea who this person is it's a bit bullish to then get upset at me for not guessing what's in your mind or what you see yourself as so there's that whole conversation around this and I'm guessing this is what they're trying to address in this Doctor Who episode or it seemed at this moment that's where they were going with it the grandmother does admit later or shortly after that she gets clumsy and Donna admits that she too gets clumsy as well and and I'm sure Rose is the kind of person, at least I was sure at this point in the episode, that would just kindly correct them and understand that her family's trying to accommodate her. It also feels like a very recent thing, her changing her presentation, which is why it's probably very hard for the grandmother, especially to adjust. Where the hell did she come from? How lucky am I? Don't you, mum? Oh, yes. The thing that really gets me is the underhanded and almost overt aggression coming from Donna. And it feels as though throughout the episode, people are supposed to be walking on eggshells around Rose. I don't get why Donna is acting like this. I mean, I say that and I 
also said that she's the adult version of Sarah and Sarah would probably act like this. So it's par for the course. But I see a lot of people in real life also acting like this with this aggression. The thing is people give you back the energy that you put out. And the thing is Rose is not giving out that energy or at least she wasn't introduced that way. So the fact that Donna is doing that to her mother makes it feel very uncomfortable and awkward. And I can understand how people would get turned off by that. It kind of reminds me of when I used to be a Christian. Sorry, I'm not trying to trigger anyone. But if a preacher did something wrong where you dare say anything negative or criticize the preacher or even call him out, you have to be careful because that's the man of God. He's touched by God. You can't speak out against him. You can't ask questions. You can't offend them. And it's like, bro, if you're that protected where people cannot criticize you or call up something that you're doing or joke about you or make a mistake around you and they have to walk on eggshells around you, it's kind of culty. It feels like a freaking cult. Like that is a problem. That, that is oppression. If someone is in a marginalized group, I would think the one thing they would want is to be treated like everybody else. But you can't want to be treated special and scare people into treating you that way, but also want it to be treated equally. The two things don't go hand in hand. So Donna acting like this might turn off a lot of people. It certainly doesn't do any favors for Rose, which I'm sure in her mind, she's trying to protect as a mom. Anyway, when Rose's kid neighbor calls her out, the first thing I'm thinking is, oh my God, I hope that those guys that were making fun of her aren't waiting around the corner to jump her or something because then she goes into this dark alley and my nerves are on end because I'm thinking oh my god something is gonna happen to this person and I'm starting to like her and I actually care about what happens to her thank goodness though it's just this uncanny alien Furby creature who's being chased by these evil looking grasshopper things and this thing looks so cute but also freaking creepy at the same time you don't really know how to feel about it but yeah it's being chased by these things Rose shelters a thing called a meep and she's trying to help her mom and dad financially we find out as she is talking with the meep which is really sweet so we're getting to know a little bit more of her personality she even has her own little house shed in the backyard which is nice and we see her bonding over meep by saying that she feels different too i want to go home the meep is all alone i know that feeling sometimes i think i'm from a different planet Meep says she sounds lonely. She corrects the Meep by saying, no, just different, which I guess is a very optimistic way of looking at things. Mother finds out that the Meep is in the shed. Doctor is drawn to Donna's house once again, where the Meep is. This is the next part of the show that just feels very weird. Yes, the Meep. I promise I can help him get home and then you'll never see me again. You're assuming he as a pronoun. True. Yes, sorry, good point. Are you he or she or they? My chosen pronoun is the definite article. I am always the Meep. So that whole pronoun bit, I get it because it's probably part of Rose's character, but it almost feels very forced in the way they do this. I feel like the writing could have been less on the nose. Like Rose could have said something like, how do you know it's a he? And then David Tennant's like, yeah. Good point. What are you? Oh, I'm just the meep. Instead of this whole approach that we got, because it feels like an elementary school teacher whose whole identity is about pronouns is the one who wrote the script. I feel like there's a tactful way to write stuff like this because people talk about these things, which is fine, but it sounds like some weird presentation rather than people having actual dialogue. I mean, Doctor Who has never been the strongest when it comes to dialogue or dialogue feeling absolutely natural. It plays out more like theater play, to be honest, but for people who are watching Doctor Who were just coming back and who weren't always fans, I imagine they're gonna be very confused or annoyed because this is what people see on Twitter all the time and the people who usually are the loudest about things like this are the ones that make it their entire identity and then vilify everyone else. There's nothing wrong with wanting to change your gender or identify with another gender but when that becomes your entire identity like even before you were human no one knows anything about you it's hard for people to look deeper into who you are as a person. So the episode starts to become a little bit of that like Rose to me should just be a girl who is now a character in the Doctor Who franchise but at every moment we're reminded she's trans she wants to fit in she wants to be respected for who she is now yet at every waking moment we have a bright red flag waving in her face reminding us she's trans she's trans she's trans she's trans it just comes off as very awkward and then the rest of the episode does the same thing it's unnecessary so we have the meep that actually turns out to be evil after all i don't think this is all puppeteering but if it is that's very impressive so the meep <laughs> makes a stupid remark about you and your weird child towards donna which i'm not gonna lie that was kind of funny that came out of left field like <laughs> but then to the ending which also felt like it came out of nowhere before we go there donna finds out bit by bit those missing pieces are starting to come back much to her mother's chagrin another criticism real quick that i have um of the show or the episode that was really annoying is the fact that we got this very long back and forth with the soldiers and the aliens shooting at each other like it goes on for so freaking long to the point where it feels like filler 
Anyway, the evil Meep decides it wants to annihilate Earth, ruling over everyone. I like the aspect of the Meep being a new villain rather than just having the Daleks over and over again. Donna, without hesitation, when she learns that if she remembers she will die, says that she is willing to do so for her daughter so she can save her. There's a barrier that comes down between her and the Doctor, the villain ship, and for them to power down the whole drill thing that's supposed to suck up the energy that's harming the Earth, the Doctor is going to need Donna's help. He can't be on the other side of the barrier and she can't do the same. So the Doctor says a whole string of words that's supposed to make Donna remember. And the last word is... Binary. Jesus Christ. Yep, binary. Immediately I'm thinking to myself, oh boy, here we go. I hope that's just a coincidence, but I have a feeling it's not. Donna is able to help turn off the sequence after she gets the powers unlocked. She's super intelligent again. And the Earth manages to like repair its roads automatically for some reason. But Donna's dying and they still haven't answered the question as to why the doctor's face has come back. <laughs> Turns out Donna's not dead and we see her come back to life and we see her daughter Rose suddenly with the same level of intense intelligence that Donna possesses as the doctor and Rose is telling her and the doctor it's time to come back down and save. So basically Donna had too much power for one person as the doctor had said but by her having a kid it's split into two now so they share the power and I shit you not for those of you who've not watched it this is the scene that we get. Wow. Um. So I like the Easter eggs of her shed being the memory of the TARDIS and the monsters and she choosing her name when she converted into Rose which was the companion we started out with and the many adventures. So she had these memories without realizing it or rather the Doctor's memories. I don't know. So the Doctor and Donna go back and forth with this realization about the binary thing. It just makes no sense to me. Maybe my brain is very small so I can't get it. But here's the scene. We're binary. She's not because the Doctor is And I know. I'm, I'm sorry, forgive me, but this makes no absolute fucking sense. You cannot be binary and non-binary at the same time. Binary means something that has two parts or involving two things or is made up of two things. So that would mean the doctor is non-binary as well. So him saying that we're binary, but both, it makes no sense. You are non-binary because you're male and female. And it's a very cute story in terms of Rose's presentation because that would make sense in the way she's born, not being male or female, or not feeling as though she identifies as just male or female, even though she she now feels like she's female or she's presenting as female, but I get it, that makes sense. But them saying that it's both makes no sense. If you're neither, then how can you be more? What are you more of? I'm going to assume that this is just some alien shit going on because Rose did say that she feels like she's from another planet. So it could be now that she's part Time Lord, which would make for a very good origin story. But I feel like they could have written that a little bit better. It just came off so freaking corny. I'm willing to forgive that because Doctor Who is corny by nature or whatever, but then it gets worse. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened to Russell, but it feels as though he's just slapped together the script because he was very tired or he had to take a shit or he has something against someone because it just felt like more care and quality could have been put into this. If this is the story you want to tell, fine, but it just felt like he slapped it together out of some Wattpad fan fiction because the scene that we get next is so crazy and out of pocket that it honestly makes me feel like I don't want to watch anymore. Everything else I can be like, okay, it's corny, it could have been written better, but the way they wrapped it up, I can kind of see, you know, that that that's a good origin story for this companion. I don't have a problem with Rose. I actually like Rose and I honestly want to see more of her. I actually think she'd make a great companion just based on her base personality that we were introduced with. And I do hope they carry her over with a new doctor. However, I do not like when they have new characters and franchises and then they have to step on the neck of the male characters who were an integral central part of the franchise before them. All to prop up the female characters. And I know some people might get annoyed at me talking about this, but I am a woman. As I've said in almost every other video, I'm going to call out when representation is done poorly. I don't want people walking on eggshells around me. And I don't want people to think that I'm one of those people who think you should put down men to make me feel better because that would not make me feel better. It's like trying to win a race and trying to figure out whether or not you're the fastest person, but you realize you're losing. So you trip the fastest person in front of you and then you get the trophy. You get away with it and say you won and you feel within your heart like, oh, I'm an actual winner who deserves this. You must know on some level that you're not really the winner unless you're delusional because you had to be dirty to get that trophy. So that means that you really aren't as fast as you thought you were or you're not 
the fastest person because you would have lost otherwise if you had not tripped that person who was passing you. And so when female characters or new characters do this, it's very disrespectful to the franchise and to the fans of David Tennant and it feels like they brought him back just like they did with Indiana Jones and Lucas Skywalker and Ant-Man and Nick Fury and countless other franchises just to shit on the male character. What? You still gotta fix it, because the Metacrisis might have slowed down, but that thing is wrapped around your cortex. Yes, we know. We know everything. Thanks. And you know nothing? Does she not want anyone? She's awesome. <laughs> <Are you> abs <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are you absolutely fucking kidding me right now? What the fuck is this? What the hell is even that? No, seriously? There is a difference between trying to be inclusive and just being a fucking douche. Seriously, whoever wrote this is a freaking Muppet. I cannot believe this is actually real. And it gets worse because, oh my god, I swear to god. Like, if you want to even just watch this for the sheer audacity, give it a watch if you feel like wasting your time. Because this is the first time I've ever walked away from a Doctor Who episode and was like, what in the eternal fuck did I just watch? The first 15 minutes were great. And then it just descended into madness. And it only takes a few scenes or one to just ruin the immersion. The recap itself starting out ruined the immersion. So... <laughs> Donna says that, you know, with the smark, everyone's sm with the smarky attitude is basically saying that to the doctor, you're not a woman anymore because she would have understood. Even though in the previous scene, they just said the doctor is both male and female. So regardless of the fact that he's not in a woman's body anymore, isn't he still technically female? So now why are you talking down to him? Which is very misandrous, by the way. Like, he's talking to you and trying to educate you because you were humans. I get it. Now y'all have some knowledge and you're like, oh, but we know everything. Fair enough. Fair enough. But then you had to put in the woman bit, the woman doctor, who, by the way, was the stupidest doctor of all the doctors. We've got all that power. But there is a way to get rid of it. Something a male presenting time lord will never understand. So good. And again, the male character just has to sit there with his mouth shut like a virgin snatch as they let these freaking things walk and talk down to him because he's stupid and he was never as great as he thought he was. The stupid alien. Right, fans? All you stupid fangirls who were in love with him. He wasn't all that in a bag of chips. We brought him back so we could shit on him for you. And then I like how the woman in the wheelchair just looks up at him like, uh-huh, they told you, bitch. And so the answer is that they give him is to just let it go. They don't need him. They just have to let it go because it's done that all along. And so they hold hands, Disney style, because they choose to let it go. <laughs> says after all these years i'm finally me <laughs> whatever the fuck that means so the adventure's not over because they get stuck in the tardis tardis has an overhaul it has a coffee machine and then we have some foreshadowing of donna ruining things again as she got fired from her job because she dropped coffee in the machine and it goes haywire and oh no it can take them anywhere in time and space and i don't give a fuck honestly just wow man i hope there are trans people out there that love this genuinely i do just because i have an issue with something doesn't mean i want everybody else to have an issue with it it's my opinion but if i'm being honest as a woman i'm embarrassed i'm embarrassed and i feel insulted i feel insulted as a woman and embarrassed that they wrote us this way because good lord Time Lord. If I were trans, I would feel embarrassed. Or maybe I wouldn't. I don't know, because I've never walked that road in life. But maybe this is saying too much, but I feel like could be just the audacity of me. I feel like trans people deserve a little better. Rose is an interesting character, and they managed to make her so likable. It made me interested. Like, I actually cared what happened to her in the episode. But then when it ended, even though I do want to see more of her, the episode ended with me not giving a damn about her, to be honest. She felt like some kind of pawn just for the sake of the last scene. It just felt very weird and forced and unnatural. It felt like somebody wrote this off the top of their head and this was basically the brainstorm draft and they never finished it into an actual cohesive script. And the thing is they could have done so much with this and they went that route and this is why a lot of people don't respect it. You see what Matt Smith did? When he was introduced, I still didn't like him. I did not like the man, but they continued with the quality and it made me interested. They're like, okay, fine. And then shit on the other doctors. He didn't pretend he was better than everybody else. He won me over with his acting his presentation and the writing won me over and they still talked about social issues, taboo stuff, different cultures, all that stuff. Never once felt like they were disrespecting the doctor. The doctor is the star of the show and I don't know why studios feel as though they need to take other characters to downplay to downplay the central characters or the mascots of the franchises. That's like a new character being introduced into Mari Mario, whichever, Mario, Mario, I don't know, whichever way I pronounce it people say it's wrong. But anyway, if you introduce the character into Mario who just happens to be a 
a woman, this new character, and her saying, Mario ain't shit, which is, oh wow, that did kind of happen in the Mario movie, didn't it? Anyway, this was just so poor. And honestly, I'll keep giving it a chance for now, but if it continues with this level of haphazard writing, I feel like I'm just done. And David Tennant, as much as I love him, this kind of killed it for me because they killed him. Imagine Rick Sanchez sitting down there and not saying a word as two supplemental characters talk down to him like that. That would be the day. Like I'd be, this is no longer Rick Sanchez because that's not even, like what? <laughs> that's just my opinion. So I walked away feeling like I didn't enjoy myself. Phil was, uh, scene with the soldiers I realized like at that point I just sat there and I'm like is this gonna stop like it felt like they didn't have enough material and they're like we have to fill in the time so you're sitting there for five minutes watching these people shoot back and forth and no damage is being done they do explain that later but it's like well, what is this this could have been cut down it didn't need to be this long are we just watching people pew pew the entire time what is it Star Wars I actually thought this was gonna be a new companion Dom is gonna pass the torch to Rose Rose is gonna go on adventures with her mom and the doctor and then it's gonna transfer over to Rose and the doctor and then the new doctor with Rose and yada 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 like the way they always did it and they just kill that immediately implying that women know everything or if you're female presenting you know everything is a very disingenuous and entitled way of writing these characters the doctor never claimed to know everything because he was a man or he look like a dude he's a time lord so it makes sense for him to know way more than the humans because he's seen almost all of space and time but now suddenly because they have the same power he has they're saying they're not saying we know as much as you now oh we know more than you not because of the power but because you're male presenting right now even though you literally said that he is both male and female so he has to be presenting as female or look like one for him to now know as much as you do, even though he's already male and feet. You see how much sense that does not make. It's so annoying because I feel like we deserve better. And I know I'm going up an octave right now because the more I think about it, the madder I get. But I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. It's just really shitty writing in my opinion. I know there's some of you who love the episode and I'm glad that you did. What was your favorite part of the episode? Who was your favorite person? At the moment, for me, <laughs> It's none of them, including the doctor. He just doesn't feel like the doctor in this one. And half the time, it looks like he doesn't even wanna be there. But let's have a discussion. Also, trans people, feel free to leave your thoughts because I know that you're the ones who can probably identify more with the character and the topic since you're literally walking that road in life. And people, please be respectful of each other. You can disagree and debate and get passionate without name calling each other and torch chucking or whatever and descending into freaking verbal pandemonium because you're gonna get back the energy you put out anyways i need to go drink some water because that whole bit made me thirsty as hell if you like the style of video also let me know i feel so shitty right now but anyways thanks so much for watching this has been ultiori you ask we answer mm -hmm.